Hey what's good guys welcome back to TNQ VD and this is a review of the MacBook Pro 13 inch and what I think of it as an engineering freshman with computer science major. Let's get started. things off, here's some details about the specific Mac that I'm talking about. This is a 2017 MacBook Pro 13 inch without a touch bar uh, with the Intel Core i5 KB Lake CPU which has a base clock of 2.3 GHz and a turbo boost of up to 3.6 GHz, 128 gigs of SSD and it has 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM. So now that's out of the way, let's talk about why Mac is by far my favorite machine. The construction of the Mac is beyond insane, it's a bit like a tank and although you might feel super conscious about carrying it to school because it's so expensive and therefore it's a natural instinct to protect it with all your life, trust me, unless you throw your bag around or god forbid you throw your Mac around the class, it should be perfectly fine. The Mac is ridiculously thin and light which makes it a super portable machine for class. It's small so it fits easily in any laptop bag you might have and its lightweight makes it almost undetectable when you carry it around in your bag. Obviously, to get to this insane level of thinness in a pro machine, Apple had to make a few sacrifices and we'll get to all of them in a second, but for now, because the display is so thin, there is no glowing Apple logo, it's just a piece of metal, therefore it's just reflective. The batteries, even though they are stacked or contoured, are still lower in capacity than any other previous MacBook Pro. And the keys have lesser travel to them, more about that in a minute, but overall there isn't much to complain about the build quality. The display's native resolution is 2560 by 1600 pixels, which results in very sharp content. macOS in particular scales perfectly and you can always enjoy crisp text and images. It gets fairly dim and very bright at 500 nits. The bezels are also quite thin so you'd enjoy a very immersive experience while programming or while watching Netflix. It supports a white P3 colored gamut along with Adobe's sRGB color space with 98% accuracy so for those of you who edit photos or videos on your laptops, you'll fall in love with this display. The viewing angles are great and with such high pixel density, it's almost impossible to tell pixels apart even from a couple of feet away. The anti-glare coating is a real charm when it comes to reducing glare while looking at the screen in bright light. Overall, just a great looking retina display. The keyboard is now in a smaller footprint just like the entire laptop and it uses these keys that I'm sure that you have heard by now, they're called the butterfly mechanism switches and they are the topic of many lawsuits and controversies. Alright, for those of you who do not know what I'm talking about, here's what's happening. Apparently, these keys are so fragile that many people have found that these keys have stopped responding and on diagnosing the problem, it was found that there were small amounts of dust that could get inside the key and destroy the key mechanism, rendering the key useless. And thanks to Apple's super cool new design, it's impossible to replace the key or even for that matter, the keyboard alone. The entire top case has got to be changed and queue in all the news stories. Well, alright, I have owned this laptop for 2 months now and I haven't had any issues with my keyboard yet. But if you do, Apple does have a keyboard replacement program that I believe will run for the next 3 years. And so if you have a Mac that falls into any of these model categories and you have a problem with the keyboard, you can get it fixed for free. But this keyboard is a joy to type on. The lesser key travel, although I don't prefer it, helps me move to the next key faster and hence speeds up the entire process of typing. Seriously, I can feel it right now while I'm typing this script. And below the keyboard is this huge trackpad. Seriously, I don't think you understand how huge this trackpad is. It's almost the size of my OnePlus 3 and that's already huge. The touchpad is a force touch trackpad which means there's a haptic feedback motor built underneath the glass surface which provides a sensation of a click and therefore it can be controlled by software. If you have used an iPhone 7 or above, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, because this trackpad is controlled via software, it can also do software enabled tricks. For example, pressing hard on the trackpad while you've selected a word brings up the dictionary and in Xcode while you're aligning elements on your main storyboard, you get a haptic feedback when say you've placed the elements at the center or at the top edge. The MacBook Pro only has two USB-C ports and a headphone jack, that's it. Therefore, to do any kinds of file transfer from the legacy USB B or A, you'll need an adapter and especially with a 128 gig Mac, it's only a matter of time before you run out of internal storage and you'll need an external hard drive to continue your work. The MacBook charges with a USB-C wall adapter and thus the cable is not proprietary to Apple unlike MacSafe and you also can use any of the two ports to transfer data as well as charge the MacBook. Charging from 0 to 100 takes about an hour which is much faster than the charging time of any laptop out there. The battery life on this machine is also more than average. I'm currently running the Mojave beta on my Mac and even though it's still a beta, 
I'm still getting around couple of days of battery life while consuming media and around 5 hours of screen on time when programming with Xcode. Now to conclude, why or how is this my favorite laptop? Well, first, uh, I'm now in college. I'm studying computer sciences and engineering with specializations, and of course, I will now be doing a lot of programming. Also, before that, you should know that I've done plenty of programming in the past, and this isn't the first time I've used a laptop for programming. I've used my Acer Aspire, uh, and I've also used my desktop, but this is the first time I've used a Mac for programming, and it'll be unfair to say that I'm just liking this experience. Okay, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this, but I really like programming with Xcode, and especially developing iOS apps with Swift 4.3. is actually a game changer. For the last 15 years Apple's operating system has been built on top of Unix, the command line OS that powers most of the world's file systems and servers. The Unix shell is very important for a programmer. It lets you run programs in almost any language without a specialized IDE. This means most if not all OG programming languages will be perfectly compatible with the Mac in terms of debugging and also having their run times compatible with your machine. Of course, you know how famous Macs are for programming and creative tasks and I agree 100%. In addition to writing native apps for iOS with Swift, I can do that with Objective C and C. um and i can also easily write c++ program and debug it without installing any other ide also the intellij ide works perfectly with the mac and the android studio 2 performs much better than in windows machine other apps i use almost on a daily basis is autocad 2018 which is the bordling software my school uses for engineering graphics lightroom for on the go photo editing and evernote for taking notes and everything has been running like butter on this machine in addition to all this the portability of the laptop makes it almost a perfect device for school so overall if you're in the market for a new machine for school and you have a budget for a macbook pro and especially if you're an engineering student i'd highly recommend you get the macbook pro for school i'm pretty confident that it'll easily last me for the four years of college and many more after that Also if you can please wait till September October when Apple might launch a new entry level MacBook and also a new Mac mini that might suit your requirements. So what do you guys think of the MacBook Pro and are you a student using it? If so let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel click to the button on the right to subscribe. Click to the button on the left to watch another video on the channel. That's been it. Thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you guys in the next one.